Hey there, David from Figma here. Today we're building a simple prototype of a scrollable bio page in Figma design. A prototype is a functional version of your design, kind of like a preview of how it would look and work if it were a real website or app. You'll use text, shapes, images, and color to share a bit about yourself, and we'll even use auto layout to keep things nice and neat. Don't forget to grab the Figma file from the video description and follow along. Let's get started. Once you have your copy of the community file, head to the page titled Make a Prototype. Zoom in so you can see the frame and the elements we're going to use to build our prototype. First, grab this rectangle and drag it into the iPhone 16 frame. Then grab this circle, which has a 10 pixel stroke set to the inside and drag that also into the frame and snap the center of the circle to the bottom of the rectangle and in the center of the frame. Drag the text box that says your name and bring that to the center. Click on the tagline and bring that to the center. And then we need to bring in this button. But when I do, I see that the text is not attached. Zoom in here, left click and drag over both the adjective text box and the rounded rectangle, align to center and make sure it's aligned to center. Now, while both items are selected, use the keyboard shortcut Control G to group them. And you'll see I have a group right here. Let's double click in the layers panel and call this adjective. Bring your adjective button into the center of your frame. Now I wanna show you what happens when I try to apply an auto layout. When I click on the frame and apply an auto layout, the whole thing just breaks. I'm gonna use Control Z to bring that back. To fix this in this instance, I'm gonna select the rectangle and select the circle while holding down Shift, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control G to group them. Now when I apply an auto layout to this frame, it's going to space things out nicely. I can hover between the vertical gap between objects and definitely make sure your auto layout direction plus gap is set to vertical layout. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to, let's go with 20. Now one thing I also want to do is click on this frame and make sure my alignment is set to top center and that the height is set to hug content. Now what I need to do is open up padding settings and set a bottom padding of let's say 30. Now I'm gonna bring my text into that auto layout frame. Click on the text box and bring it into the frame and you'll see a blue line. Let go of the click and you'll see that the auto layout is automatically applied to that frame. Next, bring this image placeholder and drag it in below at the very bottom as well. You'll see a padding of 30 is set to the bottom to give a little bit of space. Next, click on the adjective and hit Control D. While that is selected, hit Control D again, and you'll get a third one. Go down to your image placeholder and do the same thing. Hit Control D once and a second time, and you'll see that you now have three. I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna click on your tagline. While holding the Option key, click on your tagline and bring it down right below the text. There we go, when you let go, you'll see that you've brought your tagline down here. Double click into that text box and replace your tagline with the text photos that describe me. Now it's time to personalize your prototype. Double click on the text box that says your name and well, type your name. Double click on your tagline and write a sentence or something that describes you. Once you have your name and your tagline, double click on an adjective. You'll need to click maybe a few more times to get into the text box of the adjective where you can fill these in with three words that describe yourself. Once you have those three adjectives, scroll down and double click into the text box. In this space, write a little biography about who you are and what you like. Now that we have our text and shapes, it's time to apply some color. Click on the iPhone 16 frame and scroll down to selection colors. Click on the dark gray and you'll see some preset options of colors you can use from this page, which are actually from this little set of text colors and background colors. For the white, let's go ahead and set the background color. I'm going to make this a light green. Now click on that dark gray and I'm gonna change this to be the darker green. I can go into my prototype settings, select a device, and go to iPhone 16. Go back to design mode, click on iPhone 16 frame, hold down shift space, and now you can see that you can actually scroll as if it were a living and breathing web page or app. What's cool about this is if I make a change to the design, it'll change the prototype as well. Let's use Control Z to bring it back to what it just was. I'm gonna keep this iPhone preview up just because I like seeing what my design will look like as I'm building out the rest of this prototype. To grab an image of yourself, let's go ahead and move this over. Click up here, hover down to File, 
and click on place image or video. Select an image from your computer and plop it onto the canvas and scale this down just a bit. Now click on the image, go down to the fill. While this pop-up is open, use the keyboard shortcut control C, double click and double click again until the circle is selected. While this is selected, use the keyboard shortcut control V to fill that circle with your profile picture. If that's not working for you, right click on the image, hover over to copy and paste and copy it as a PNG. Once it's copied as a PNG, you can double click and then hit control V to fill that. Click on the image fill. From here, I'm gonna select the fill option to crop. Bring this down a bit and that's looking a lot better. I can double click out and things are looking pretty nice. I can even test this and scroll down a bit. Now it's time to add your images. Open up another tab in your browser and find an image. I'm using images from Unsplash. Right click on the image to copy the image, double click on the rectangle so that it is selected. While it's selected, hit the keyboard shortcut control V. If you need to change the fill of this, click on fill, change from fill to crop, you can edit how this actually is viewed in that rectangle itself. And that's looking pretty good. Once your images are in, scroll around the prototype and see how it looks. When I am on this top part, I feel like something's missing and there might be an opportunity to add an image in this top section. So let's try that. I found an image of some green texture I wanna use. I'm gonna copy that image, go back here and click in so that this rectangle is selected. While it's selected, use the keyboard shortcut control V. And you'll see that change made in the prototype itself. I can change and edit the vertical gap between objects. I think I might want a little bit more space and 24 is looking pretty good right here. I can scroll down and see this as if it were living and breathing on a web page or as an app. Another way to view your prototype is to click on the play button up here and present the prototype itself. You can edit your prototype settings and even change the color of the phone or the background. You can even share this link with others to show off your awesome new creation. If you'd like to look at some other examples, click on the examples page and get inspired by these other examples that students have created using a very similar process to what we walked through today. Feel free to poke around and double click on things and see how they made stuff. Maybe even move some things around in their design to get inspired how you can make your prototype even more personal to you. Hope you had fun and happy designing.